Welcome on back to another episode of The Goonery. Myself and Brandon here. Coming up on the start of the league year next week in the NFL, it, it, it's going to be a busy week here, Brandon, especially, especially following what was a very eventful combine for the quarterback position especially. And with our Bears having the first overall pick, I feel a lot better about the situation than I did just last week. Who would have thought that the name that was going to cause so much wreckage at the top of the draft would be Anthony Richardson. And here's the thing, too. I, I think a lot of people are very confused about why he has shot up so many people's draft boards. And, and the thing is, when you really think about, when you look at Anthony Richardson, like his the, the game against Utah was like the biggest selling point of him. And because because number one, Florida was not a good football team and his numbers were not very good. And then when you look at his intangibles with the arm talent and how good he can run with the football, you just say, damn, I remember that guy. That was Josh Allen at Wyoming. Yep. Yep. And, the thing, and you know something, sometimes you have to fall in love with the potential because let's be honest, you have to do that with every prospect in a draft because the leap from NFL, from college to NFL is very, very drastic, no matter what anybody mm-hmm. says. So I think it's important that we realize that's why Anthony Richardson is getting the type of love that he is. And let's be honest, if he gets with the right coach, that could be the steal because everybody's either talking about Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, or Will Levis to a lesser extent. If they get that guy, Anthony Richardson, if they get that guy, and as he falls maybe on a draft board, maybe he gets taken number two, and they get, maybe he gets taken number one. Who knows? But it is a steal considering where he started and what his, his, his ceiling is going to be. Because if we're talking about ceilings, it's up there with top quarterbacks. It all plays out well for him. Yeah, and I don't want to dump on Anthony Richardson. I, I I don't. I simply don't think he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. End of the day, I, he's a super athlete. I just don't see him as a starting quarterback in the NFL. I mean, plain and simple. But as a Bear fan right now, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm not complaining because. The price of that first overall pick just got jacked all the way up because of his oh, yeah. the combine. And you have people saying now that Anthony Richardson is going to be a top five pick. Like it's, it's almost near con, not consensus, but he shot up a lot of draft boards this past week. And yeah, absolutely factor that in with CJ Stroud having a good combine. Bryce Young had a pretty good combine from what I heard. Will Levis had a good combine. It's yeah. It went as about about as good as it could have possibly gone for the Bears this past this past weekend. And Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus from the Bears, they did a little bit of a media tour. They 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 spoke with some people uh, at the combine, and it's got me excited, man. It, it, it has me excited because I feel like that was the first time we really got to see them kind of peel back those layers a little bit and give a little more clarity on the situation. What we knew on this show, but other people pretended to not know in regards to this front office, this regime, and Justin Fields, we all know it now for sure. There's not a doubt in our mind Justin Fields is our quarterback. And who would have thought, right? Who would have thought? Crazy. And it's the fact that Ryan Poles has said he's already been on the phone discussing potential packages for that first overall pick. That leads me to believe that March 15th, the Chicago Bears will no longer be drafting number one overall in the 2023 draft. You know, I would love for that to happen, but I, I, I believe when Bryce Young has his pro day, more and more clarity is going to come. And that's not a problem because the more this process kind of lags on, there's going to be more teams because it's going to be more teams than Indianapolis and Houston. Seattle might be a team. Las Vegas might be a team. Carolina might is is looking more and more. Carolina, likely. Yeah. They're going to they're going to break the the whole entire draft and trade up to number one. So it's crazy to think that because as Bears fans, we wanted to see 
results in a different kind in 2022. We want to see results of progression. And we had to sit through just a, a, a very, very bad product on the field so we could get to this point. And I, I must admit to you, I, I don't know if you saw some of the quotes from the Peter King interview that Ryan Poles did, but this man has the entire league in his hands right now. And, and the fact that he's talking about potentially getting two future or two or three future first round picks, that means he has practiced the incredible amount of patience to be like, listen, I'm going to keep these offers in hand. But if you really, really want to blow me away, you're gonna up that. You're gonna up that that package, and you are going to throw in another first round pick, throw in another second round, mm-hmm. throw in a player, something. But I, I think with how this is being handled so far, the hall's gonna be big, mm-hmm. and it just kind of like, kind of really makes you wonder if. Because Houston would would probably bring up a good package mm-hmm. if you get a two to twelve, Indianapolis you'll probably get the four to thirty five in a in a future future uh in a late round pick, but Carolina really might be the most intriguing. That, they that, have to do a lot. That to... is that, that's what I was going to ask you because you're 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 the mock draft guy on this show. You you get into the nitty gritty more than I do with these mock drafts. Out of all the mock drafts you've sent me, that you've you've showed me your 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 mocks, I'm falling more in love with the idea of the Carolina Panthers trading up to number one. Yes, every single day, I am falling more in love with that because that puts you in a spot to draft JSN. That puts you in a spot to potentially get DJ Moore. That I mean, it's just the possibilities there are. I, I don't want to say endless, but. An ideal situation, in my opinion, you trade back once, right? You trade back wherever. Say you trade back to two with the Texans, fine. You take that number two pick and you see that the Texans trade up, draft a quarterback, there's going to be even more of a frenzy now for a quarterback to leapfrog the Colts at four. Why not trade back again? It's the possibilities here are endless. And I understand I'm playing a little bit of Madden franchise mode right now with these thoughts. I I, I get that. (laughs) But – I really do think Ryan Poles is just going to take a swing for the fences like we haven't seen with the Chicago Bears, I mean, honestly, do ever. And I am yeah. in, I'm including trading up one spot over the 49ers to draft Mitchell Trubisky when they knew they weren't taking him. And that it's it, it's exciting times, man. It, it, it really is. And here's the thing, too. One thing that excites me because I know a lot of people have said Will Anderson is a generational pass rusher. And here's the thing, too. I don't think people, people really realize that the Bears could miss out on Will Anderson and still mm-hmm. be okay. Because here's, a, here's the thing. Drafting a wide receiver in the top 10 is always going to be a risky proposition. Mm-hmm. But two things are in play. One, the talent of Jackson Smith and Jigma is undeniable undeniable and guess what your quarterback wants them in Chicago as well number two if you really want to bolster that pass rush guess what the 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 free agent class is they they got they still got some guys that can rush the pass it but yeah. guess what it's also a very very rich edge rusher pat uh, um, uh class mm-hmm. you can get one of that the guy from Kansas State and the guy from Northwestern, why am I not saying their names? Because I can't pronounce them, but you can look them <laughs> up. But if you can wait out on one of them, you'll still win the draft regardless. Mm-hmm. And and especially if you can, because you're going to have at least two second round picks. You could possibly have three second round picks with all the said and done. If you decide to go from one to two, two to four, two to nine. You have a lot of picks at hand. So yeah. you can address a need at wide receiver. You can, you can address a need at edge rusher. You can address a need at offensive alignment, where, whether it be an, uh, a center, whether it be a right tackle, whether it be a guard, it doesn't matter. Fact of the matter is the leverage that the Bears have to really flip this entire roster on top of having all the cap space, it's, it's like, damn, the, it's, the possibilities are endless at this moment i know you're 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 afraid from saying that but it truly is endless for this Mm -hmm. for this team no i mean it it is and i 
I'm I'm really interested too to see what the strategy is going to be here heading into the draft because I I really thought the Bears were going to end up with one of one of three running backs in free agency. I really thought in my heart of hearts, I thought one of Saquon Barkley, Tony Pollard, or Josh Jacobs would be the running back for the Chicago Bears this year. I genuinely thought that that was a place with where the cap situation is at. You can spend on a position like that where you're, yeah. it's, it, that's typically not a position you're going to go out and spend a ton of money on in free agency. I don't think David Montgomery will be back. I, I, I really don't. I would love to have David Montgomery back. But here's a guy, I'm, I'm wearing the hat, Chase Brown. He lit up the combine. And the fact that his legs are still on his body after playing in a Brett Bielema offense for two years in Champaign. <laughs> dude, he was number one across the board in almost every major test for running backs at the combine. His explosiveness was number one. I'm pretty sure his broad jump, number one. Vertical, number one. I mean, three cone, I'm pretty sure he was number one. I mean, it's all there. He's going to be a guy you could get fit fourth, fifth, sixth round potentially. I'm not saying he's the fix, but if you could have a combination of him, Khalil Herbert, I'm okay with that at the running back position for next year. So the running backs that have been tagged, free agency in terms of the top guys, the free free agency is looking like it's either going to be Montgomery coming back because I do think now with all the guys tagged, there is a better chance that he for, will come back. For sure, for sure. But I think Miles Sanders can also be an option. Now, it really depends on the price tag because he may commit a lot considering he may be the running back one or two in this class. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the draft class in general, because you can afford to spend on a running back that isn't exactly expensive and have Khalil Herbert mm -hmm. be the starter. And then you look at the class for running backs, and it, Chase Brown is is the guy for me that it, I feel like Chicago will fall in love with him considering his ties with Illinois. And, and considering, like, he can do everything that you ask of him to do, that is also a plus. But there is a guy that went in the late in the season where I would watch him play where they went on a run where – they got people's attention. They played in a pretty big bowl game. I said, this this, this is the guy. And, I, and I, I've heard his name for a long time. It seemed like he was playing at this college for a very long time. And I finally got to see him play. Deuce Vaughn. I knew me. it. I knew it. I am in love with how he plays it. I know people are going to look at his size Pretty and nice say, oh, that's another – it's another Tariq Cohen. We don't need another short running back, whatever, whatever. But you know something? You don't run He's for 3,000. You don't run for 3,000 career yards and, you're, as, and not be good. I, I don't care that you're well, – how, how tall is it? 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, it doesn't matter. 3,000 yards in the Big 12 is 3,000 yards. Absolutely. Yeah. And guess what? You compare to Tariq Cohen, guess what? There's no comparison there. No. Deuce Vaughn nope. was productive every single year. He was at Kansas State. So if you tell so for me, those are the two guys. The sleeper for me, which I think that he may go, he may go before Chase Brown and Deuce Vaughn, Tajay Spears. I don't know if you've seen this guy play, yeah. but my goodness, when late in the season where UAB was very they, like they were winning a lot of games, they played the conference championship game, I believe. He was the guy. He yep. was the guy. And they, and, and I, I don't know if it's UAB. I got to double check that. But yeah, no, it Tulane, is. Tulane, Tulane, Tulane. Er, yes, 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 yes. Tulane, yes. I had him like, I played college fantasy football this year, and I rode him to a championship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's good, man. But you know that that's that's the best thing. Running backs are going to somewhat be at a premium, considering how the 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 class is not very good. No, but. But at the same time, you can't really lose in terms of what you can get. All I ask for the Bears is you can sign Miles Sanders just to overpay. I mean, just thinking about the rest of the running backs in, in this free agency class, too. I mean, obviously, I, I, I don't love any of them, right? But someone, in my opinion, who, who I think could make sense with a change of scenery, 
someone like a Damian Harris, maybe. I, I, I he's not going to be expensive. I, I think he's someone who can just benefit from a change of scenery. You saw the flash he's out in New England. Also, hell, what about giving Alexander Madison a shot? Yes, I. I, I agree I agree with you on that one. No, I, I, I always felt he had – when he was he was at Boise State, I wanted the Bears to draft him. Mm-hmm. And I was sick that it was the Vikings that drafted him. And when he fell dead, he was more than admirable. He's... But I do want to ask you about a specific player. Mm-hmm. Does Kareem Hunt interest you at all? He does, yes. I, I, I keep, Okay, I'm I, not alone. Keep, he, he does. I mean, he does everything well. Right. You know, he's not a good guy, but it's different. <laughs> that, that's a different, different, it's a whole different story. But man, can he play football? And you know, yeah. he doesn't want to play second fiddle to Nick Chubb anymore. I know I wouldn't if I was as talented as him. And yeah, he's going to get paid by someone. I, I really do think he's going to get paid by someone. I don't know who it's going to be. I, before Pacheco's breakout, I thought there was a potential reunion in Kansas City for him, but yeah. I, don't, I don't see that happening anymore. I and another thing, person I would love to to uh, pooch away would be uh, poach away would be Jamal Williams somehow from Detroit, but that's not going to oh, happen. Oh, I mean, that's, that's not happening, but I would love to see it. All I'm saying is because even the even Dante Foreman that that that's something that interests me because yeah, when he yeah, when he, when he came good. along after after McCaffrey got traded he was pretty damn good but mm-hmm. the perfect thing about this running back class is that it's it's a good class to platoon with a guy that's younger mm-hmm. I, that, and that's the no, best that's way I can call. put it no that's that, that that that's a good way to put it I I, I agree so. <laughs> I mean, we talked about the franchise tag situation with the, uh, with those couple of running backs. Elephant in the room, biggest storyline of the week. Looks like the Ravens are going to be franchise tagging Lamar Jackson, and he's going to be making less money per year than Daniel fucking Jones. Just let, wrap, let that sink in for a minute. Um, an MVP winner. I think he's has a career record of like 36 and – like 17 or something like that. The sole reason the Ravens have been good the last three, four years, um, the lowest offensive payroll in the league since he's been in the NFL. And the Ravens don't want to pay him. And neither does anyone else. And that just doesn't make sense to me, especially considering if they match that franchise, if they go above that franchise tag, it's going to cost them two first round picks. Think about that. Think about what it's going to cost teams to trade up and get that first overall pick from the bears this year. What mm-hmm. are teams like the jets? What are teams like the Falcons? Well, I just, I, the Raiders even, I mean, even the saints at one point this off season, I know that their cap situation was dog shit, but, or even the Buccaneers, what are they doing? I don't understand it. So I want to, I'm going to talk about both Lamar Jackson and Daniel Jones because it's very important to point out both situations. So I'm going to start with Lamar Jackson. I want to keep into perspective for people that people, teams were shamelessly goo goo gaga over Deshaun Watson coming off allegations. Mm -hmm. And what happens? He gets met with a guaranteeing contract. I don't have the number right now. He gets like 230 million, I believe. $230 $230 million guaranteed. That is a guy that he when he was with the Texans, he has, he has a playoff appearance, and he was obviously one of the most electric quarterbacks that also happened to sit out a year like before the allegations came mm-hmm. out. Lamar Jackson gambled on himself to play on without a new contract. He ends up he ends up getting hurt, and you could see in the playoff game against Cincinnati that if he played, Baltimore would have knocked out Cincinnati, and Cincinnati would not have been playing in the AFC Championship game. Mm-hmm. So I look at the situation, and I'm going to take it from both sides because obviously the new league year hasn't started. So the talk about collusion amongst NFL owners it, it may be a little a little bit premature. Mm-hmm. 
But I'm. But before I get to that, I want to talk about the, the Ravens organization. You don't want to guarantee a contract for him. Okay. Who do you plan on drafting that you someone expect to be better than him? You're not gonna find it. No, you're not. This draft class that maybe, and you may find it next year. But guess what? I'm here to fill you in on something. The Ravens have a roster right now. If Lamar Jackson is healthy throughout the entire season, they they can make the Super Bowl. They can make the Super Bowl. That's how good they were last year, and that's it would have made a difference if Lamar Jackson was healthy and played in last year's playoffs. So the Ravens have an unmitigated disaster going on if they let that generational talent walk out the door. And that's exactly where it's leading right now. And who are you replacing them with is my question to them. So that's so that's for the Ravens organization. For the teams that immediately said they're not available, they, 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 don't, they don't want Lamar Jackson. I'm going I'm to tell you all something. You want to know who the two biggest liars are on the planet? Politicians and people in sports. Okay. So you can sit there and say, oh, they're colluding and whatnot. Guess what? When the new league year starts, it's going to slowly, tu- slowly turn and say, hey, we're going to be making calls. We have like about two or three first round picks we can give up for Lamar Jackson. Listen, he's not going to be a Raven by draft time. I can almost guarantee it. But I'm here to tell y'all, like, I know there's a lot of teams interested. The Falcons better be on that phone. They better be on that phone. They are in, if they can get Lamar Jackson, they may win a division by default. They have the second or third most cap space in the NFL. You pair with Lamar Jackson, he, it would be God and then Lamar Jackson. You, they will put them on the same pedestal. Michael Vick is going to take the third step, okay? <laughs> That's how much they would embrace him. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about this collusion stuff for right now. Maybe you can revisit that down the line. <laughs> but I'm telling you, He's going to get traded, but the fact that it's come to this is flat out an embarrassment for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, if I'm a Ravens fan, I'm, I don't even think angry could begin to describe how I, how I feel about the situation because I mean, just think about the history of the quarterback position for the Ravens, right? I, I mean, your Super Bowl winning quarterbacks are Trent Dilfer and Joe Flacco. I mean, just, just also, also when jo- when Trent Dilfer won a championship, they moved on from him yep. to yep. Elvis Gerbach the next year. And you know who followed Elvis Gerbach? It was Kyle Bowler. Yep. And who followed Kyle Bowler? Anthony Wright. That that's that's their history. That's it's, their history. The three really- most notable guys are Lamar Jackson, Joe Flacco, and a Steve McMahon who was on his last leg. Yep. Think about and, that. And and that's not even a knock at Lamar. Because any franchise would love to have a Lamar Jackson at their disposal. And you you just like wonder what is going on there. Like, is it because do, do you think it's like almost because I know Lamar represents himself? I think that's awesome that Lamar represents himself. We kind of saw Ro- Roquan get pushed around a little bit when he dropped his agent by the Bears, and that caused a little bit of a riff. Do you think that is the big issue here that Lamar's advocating for himself more than anything? Because I that, personally, that that, that I I think that is playing a big factor here, and I just think if the Ravens would have given him the extension they wanted last that he wanted last year, right? They would be over the moon. Yeah, they would yeah. be over the moon because he'd be making Absolutely. a few more million dollars a year than Daniel Jones is making. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine saying that this time last year had Daniel Jones would only be making about what is it like four million dollars less per year than than yeah. Lamar Jackson if that deal went through? Crazy, crazy. It's cr- it, it's crazy and it's funny because Joe Shea literally said today that I didn't like if if we if he said something along the lines of. I didn't think he was going to be his position uh, last year, considering we didn't even pick up his fifth-year option. Mm-hmm. But since we're on the topic of Daniel Jones, I want to take it from both sides again. Now, here's the thing. Daniel Jones had 15 touchdowns last season. And obviously, context matters because he's thrown to guys 
that that consists of Richie James, who was a special teams guy in San Francisco. Isaiah Hodgins was a guy who bounced around from team to team. Caddy Galladay forgot how to play football. <laughs> Wondell Robinson is a rookie who got hurt in the middle of the season. Daniel Bellinger, who's a solid tight end. Of course, you have Saquon Barkley coming out the backfield. Great. So Great. I, and, and, and yeah, exactly, exactly. And here's the thing too. If, if Daniel Jones did not have a good, uh, uh, average to good offensive line, the, the results would have been much different than this, considering who he was throwing the football to. So I, I do think this contract is a matter of what can we do if we get weapons around him? And and the fact of the matter is he did go on the road and win a playoff game. He like did. that it's not it's not even a matter of oh the defense won the game. Saquon Barkley won the game. No, Daniel Jones was the star of the show against Minnesota. So mm-hmm. that, let's, we got to give credit where it's due. And and we could, and I think, if the weapons are better, we could see what he can really do. And the fact of the matter is, two years in, if he doesn't produce, guess what? They they could they could uh, wash their heads of the contract, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, but we have to. We have to talk about Daniel Jones is making forty million dollars, forty plus million dollars. And here's the thing: he wasn't, this is a guy. He wasn't fran- he wasn't franchise tagged. He wasn't franchise tagged. Saquon well, Barkley was. So Saqu- exactly, and and, Sa- and Saquon is so much better at his position than Daniel Jones. And the fact of the matter is, Daniel Jones has better coaching around him. Obviously, mm-hmm. that plays a factor. But is he a guy that you would consider a franchise quarterback? Is he a guy that's better than, than any quarterback in the NFC outside of Sam Howell? No. Is he a top five quarterback in his own conference? No. So making this investment work is going to really, really come with the risk because I think Daniel Jones is an, is an average to above average quarterback. He's not bad by any means. No, I don't think so. But, but, but this, the, the damn market of where it is to where he's going to, he's going to be making 40 plus million dollars a year. It's, it's like, damn, you just really hate that you are picking in the mid twenties and are not in a position to get a top quarterback. Because I guarantee you, if that was the case, because obviously, if they were picking within the top fifteen, that means that they weren't that good. Mm-hmm. And Daniel Jones was a part of their success, whether people want to admit it or not. Fact of the matter is, you will have to jump so many teams in order to get a top quarterback in this draft. So their heads were tied. But that's also unfortunate for them because they have two years they're locked up to this. If they really if they don't wash their heads after two years, they do that. But you technically have to wait two years. And, and the, a, a scenario that you can't discount as a Giants fan is potentially being bad next season. Potentially being bad. And if Dave Jones is the reason why they're bad, guess what? They can make a they can make a move to get a top quarterback. Yeah, they can see what the market is and see what they can do to get a quarterback. Mm-hmm. But either way, it's going to be it's going to be simply this: it's either the Giants are going to fail Daniel Jones, or Daniel Jones is going to fail Daniel Jones. Yeah, and I mean we saw it with Kenny Galladay. The Giants really don't care if the contract doesn't work out. Wiping their hands clean, taking their taking their loss. And I mean, I do think that he will continue to get better in the Brian Dable offense. I I, I genuinely do. I, I think Daniel Jones sits in that, you might call me crazy for this, but I think he's in that 16 to 22 range for quarterbacks. I, I, I do think his his legs give him a little bit of a bump because whether people want to admit it or not, he's a top five running quarterback in this league. He, yes, he, is. he can make plays with his legs and they just have to play to his strengths. I don't know what they're going to do. They'd be foolish to not try and spend big on a receiver this off season. Absolutely. You know, we've tossed around the name Deandre Hopkins to the bears. Deandre Hopkins makes a lot of sense to go to New York as well. Absolutely. There's, a lot of a lot of ways they could go about improving that offense. 
Are they going to do it? I don't know. I feel like the Giants have been in the exact same spot offensively since Odell Beckham left <laughs> New York, however many years yeah. ago that was, and they've just been kind of stagnant ever since. But we'll see. I mean, you can only get so much done with Darius Slayton and, and company. So, and and also too, you get him more weapons is obviously going to help. But the one thing I'm scared of is him getting more weapons and him throwing the football more going to prone him to more mm-hmm. interceptions, mm-hmm. more fumbles because that was the the two things that plagued him in his career early on, and. We're going to see. We're going to see yeah. because that whole game manager stuff, if you get weapons, that game manager stuff got to go out the window, man. He got, He's going to have to mm-hmm. be a quarterback that's going to make some throws. And he made them in that playoff game, but we saw what happened the next week. So the jury is still very much out on him. Yeah, so just, I mean, staying with – let's just stay with New York here. Quarterback situation in the other locker room at MetLife. Jets players have been very vocal about wanting Aaron, Aaron Rodgers and yeah. including him on Twitter. And I'll be honest, I, I'm starting to lean towards Aaron Rodgers as the starting quarterback in New York Jets next year. Just yeah. like just like Brett Favre before him, he's going to go to New York. Who would have thought? Realistically, Daniel Jones is making $40 million, right? What are you going to pay for two years of Aaron Rodgers? Because, I mean, I know he's 38 years old. I, I know. But he's still playing at as high of a level as, like, he he has his whole entire career. Right. He's still that guy. It's, it's just – he's such a damn headache, too. Yeah. Because because Jeff, Jeff Fitz – go ahead. Have we heard about his ayahuasca, like, blackout retreat thing? Yeah, like, his four days of darkness. Has anything come out from that? No, it, like, let's let's be honest. That whole retreat was just a, another way to say, hey, I dropped some acid and I wanted to be by myself while I did it. Good for you. Good for you. So You're so deep. You're such a, you're such a deep-thinking person. Good for you. Good for fucking you. But anyways... Jet fans are going to have to prepare themselves for the whole, am I going to retire? Am I not going to retire thing? Especially if it doesn't particularly work out, you know, making the playoffs, mm-hmm. being contention for the division, whatever it may be. And I do think that there's going to be a little bit of regret if Aaron Rodgers comes to New York and does pretty much nothing. And you're going to look at Derek Carr, who could – maybe fail with New Orleans, but you also look at him as an option that you could have for a couple of years rather than a guy who will play a year and be like, eh, I kind of want to retire. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, who, who knows? But it's it, it, it's tricky. But the Jets do have a roster that can win now. They do. That's what they do. is that's what is really important. And at the end of the day, the draft picks will come around, the talent will come around, and you just got to see where the chips are going to fall. But it's just it's just tricky because I do think Aaron Rodgers can very much succeed for the Jets, but mm-hmm. how much the Jets will suffer if they traded a lot of their future for a guy who's 38 years old who could, who could potentially be on the back nine of his career considering even though he had a broken thumb, he did have a down season in his definition – we have to see what what exactly is is going to be for him, and it's a scary thing to think about, especially if there's no result that come from it. I just hope he's out of the division, man. I really just oh. hope he's out of the division. I end of the day, that's all I care about. I don't know. I don't care what he does, whether he retires, whether he's on the Jets, whether he, whether he's with the Buccaneers. I don't know who else. The Raiders, whatever. As long as he's not playing the Bears twice a year, again, I am A-OK with it. Absolutely. And you know something? Shout out to Brian Gutekunst for finally put, putting his foot down and saying, enough with this crap. I'm not going to be babysitting a quarterback that's going to question whether he's going to be here year after year after year. I'm going to go with the guy that I drafted that I wanted to be the franchise quarterback. And we go from there. If there's going to be a restart point at this, at this point, 
fine. You won no championships, whatever, but you can always retool to make sure you get back into that position. And who knows if Jordan Love is ready, but you have to find out. I mean, you have to. What is it? Was it is he's coming up on year four right now, I believe? Correct? I believe so. Like you have you had to. That, that, it's either it's either that or you trade. You you trade Jordan Love, but then again, you can't trade him if he has no value. He has little to no value. What, what right is now. anyone gonna, what is anyone gonna pay for? I'm assuming he's probably what 26 now. A 26 year old quarterback who has no real starting experience in the NFL. Yeah. And yeah, cool. He sat behind Aaron Rodgers. What makes you think that that was even beneficial for Jordan Love? I mean, let's be real here. What what about that other than just watching Aaron Rodgers is beneficial for him? And I get, I, I, I know this is probably just me being an asshole Chicago Bears fan, but Rodgers, I know apparently the two of them have a good relationship. I, I don't know. Apparently. I'm not buying it. I don't buy it either. It. I don't buy it either. Do you think Aaron Rodgers, the man who felt slighted by his family and refuses to talk to them, is going to then help out the rookie quarterback that they draft to be his replacement when he's not ready to leave? He recently just mentioned that they drafted his replacement. It's still very much in the back of his mind that they drafted his replacement. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry if you know, because here's the thing. I know, I know Ryan Tannehill was very uh, uh, forefront. He was very, uh, he was very upfront about, I, it's not my responsibility to, to teach a guy that's going to take my spot. And, and it turned, and you, know, you know something? He's right about it. He's right. Yeah. But if Ryan Tannehill is saying that, are we really think Aaron Rodgers is, is saying that too? Come on now. Yeah, Come on. It's a lot more uh, prominent and vocal in Green Bay than it was down Oh, in- 100%. So, I mean, uh, across the board, though, we, we briefly mentioned it, Derek Carr, now down in uh, down in New Orleans, I, I love that that petty move by him. Goes and visits, goes and visits the Saints. Says, you know what? Don't trade for me. I'll I'll let them cut me. I'll let them take their cap hit, and I'll just come sign with you. I love that. Move. Yeah, I, I love yeah, it. Shout out to Derek Carr. That that incredible. And I I saw a tweet today actually while I was eating lunch, and it mentioned all of the available quarterbacks this offseason who are just kind of middling, middle of the road, kind of nobodies, right, at this point in their careers. You have the likes of Carson Wentz, Jacoby Brissett, Taylor Heineke, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, I, it's a list of like 10 people. I think Case Keenum was on there. I, Marcus Mariota now. I mean, the list just goes on and on with these guys who are probably good backups at this point in their career, right? <laughs> Out of those guys that are left, do you see any kind of, uh, let's say, random kind of journeyman quarterback getting the chance to come in and step, uh, compete for a starting job? Do you do you see any or no at this at this stage? Well, there was some names you left out. Jimmy Garoppolo can definitely oh, compete. Yes, yes. Sam Darnold can compete. And even as nauseating it is for me to say this. Baker Mayfield could compete as well. And I, I, in terms of competing, yes. But if there's one guy that's going to be on the market eventually that can come in and be a starter from day one, it's Ryan Tannehill. And yeah. he has the most experience. And, yeah. and you could see what he can do when he has weapons. When he had a number one receiver, A.J. Brown, guess what? They were a number one seed in the EFC until they got clipped by Cincinnati. So... It's interesting where those guys can end up because after because whatever happens with the Jets, whether if Aaron Rodgers decides to retire or be a Jet, I think I think those are the two options right now. I just don't see him go back to Green Bay at this point. As crazy as it is to sound, I thought for sure it was going to be retirement or Green Bay. I'm not sure because because Raiders may draft the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, Texans may be looking for a veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have those guys who maybe on their way on their way out that you know you want to get them some more competition. So I'm not I'm not sure, but right now Ryan Tannehill could come in and start on a on a team. Which team? I'm honestly not sure. Ryan, that's an that's an interesting name because he's he he's someone who 
the last, you know, however many years he's been in Tennessee, five years or so he's probably been in Tennessee. It was a career revival that a lot of people didn't expect, myself included. I, I mean, Absolutely. he was complete dog water down in Miami. Like he was, he looked it was bad. He looked like a bust, a surefire bust. And he's cut himself out a, probably a couple, almost a couple hundred million dollars at this point and a, a pretty solid NFL career. Yep. But I'm with you. I don't think he will be with the Titans much longer. I don't know. If Malik Willis is necessarily the answer there, I, I don't know. But we, we also have to talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> Heading down to South Beach, down to Miami. Reports coming back out that Tom Brady might be coming out of retirement again. Are, are, you know, they say where there's smoke, there's fire. Are you buying this, man? Because, I mean, we've seen in the last couple of weeks alone, you know, you've been seeing some really weird social media behavior from Brady. Just like, uh, just odd. Like, it, you could tell he's a divorced father kind of going through it right now based on what you're seeing on social media. You're also hearing that he wants to take another year until he starts commentating games for Fox where he's going to be making 30-something million dollars a year. Good for him. Awesome. Take take the time if they're going to let you make 30 more, 300 more million dollars because you know you need it. And then um, there's also rumors out there that he's uh, he wants to try stand up after the movie 80 for Brady. Oh, my Lord. Is this oh. is this just like one of those situations where you haven't been told no in 20 years other than when you were divorced twice? Honestly. Okay, so um, Brady's Twitter behavior. Before I get to my point, it got him blocked because I don't want to. I don't want to see him in his. I don't want to see him in his damn drawers. So he got blocked. He's been unblocked recently. I just if it happens again, he stayed blocked. But anyways, not only do I not, I don't believe the rumors. I want these people who are spreading these rumors to go to hell. Let the man retire. This is this, we have so much going on in the NFL, and here we are talking about a guy who's forty six coming out of retirement to play quarterback for what team? Who 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 is going to be moved by Brady coming back? It won't be me. It won't be anybody else. Because let me tell you something. Everybody will say, "No count on Brady. No count on Brady. No count on Brady." Guess what? We saw the way he got sent out. Okay. We saw that, right? Everybody was watching. It was a playoff game. It was a Cowboys and Buccaneers. It was as sexy as sexy can be in terms of the teams and the names on the back of the jerseys. Yep. yep. And he played like shit. The worst game he, he played all year, in my opinion. And we want to talk about him potentially coming back. I can almost guarantee that Brady said, oh, maybe, maybe I'll come play for this team. And he was like, oh, really? I, I can report it. I can report it. I can go report. He's not coming back. Let it go. He's 46. If he wants to do stand-up and embarrass himself, let him do that. If he wants to do weird Twitter shit, let him do it. As long as he's not touching the football field again. As long as the, and, and we need to cut this rumor by the end of the week. I'm not hearing it anymore. I'm not talking about it anymore. This will be the last time I address the Dan Brady rumor on his show or anything on Twitter. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Let the man retire. I I just don't understand how the people around him are even entertaining this idea for him. I, I, He's I, not I, friends. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, you just have to think. I mean, from what you've, I've seen, it feels like both – he's close with both Edelman and Gronk, right? Both guys right. Who, who knew when to retire. I mean, yes, Gronk came out of retirement, but that was because of Brady. He only right. came out because of Brady, and then he went right back to it because he's like, oh, fuck this, I'm done. Yeah. Those two have to be in there, his ear, man. Like, you would hope. I, I, I don't know. I hope so. I just – it's just – it's it's sad because, like, if he comes out of retirement here, I, I think it's more sad than what Favre did I, I, with, with that whole song and dance. I, I really do because – the first, I know, I just, he had the storybook ending, man. 
he had the storybook ending and he literally walked, he walked away from it for what because someone else was pet he was petty because someone else broke the news yep I, I guess that's just the ult- ultimate competitor in him i don't know maybe you know what maybe if he's that competitive about sources getting information why doesn't he just become the new chapter the new rap report i mean he'll he could be as tapped in as anybody. If he wants to pursue that, I promise you, he he, he would be he would surpass Rappaport in Shafter. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, well I hope that this is the last time we have to address this on the show. And the next, oh, time- it will be my last time. It'll be my last time until sure. until he signs with Miami. Until he signs with Miami, and all right, all right. that would be, if, if, that would be some good. Hey, you know something. If if they want a quarterback, it's it's a quarterback that could can't really function that well, or it's a quarterback that runs with with cement in his shoes. You pick. <laughs> oh God! Well, that's gonna wrap up this week's episode of the Goonery. We will be back next week discussing the start of the league year and potentially. Uh, potentially some big Chicago Bears news. So stay tuned. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We will see you next time.